Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hi, hello. It is Josh Bo, one of the main editors over at MavsMoneyBall.com, coming to you with Oh boy, another edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. This time, another disappointing, frustrating Mavericks loss. A 116-106 defeat on the road Monday night to the Minnesota Timberwolves. As you can tell by me starting off this podcast, I will be hosting without Kirk. It'll just be me again tonight. Kirk's internet is still down, and it's been pretty funny that the Mavericks have had some two pretty rough losses uh, while his internet's down. Although, the Cleveland game wasn't really rough it was a heartbreaking ending but they they actually played well it would have been nice to actually see the mavericks play this game with the effort uh, that they showed in that cleveland game because if they did they might have won um and i'm I'm not even you know i know they lost by 10 but i'm not joking minnesota wasn't that impressive tonight but the mavericks laid an absolute egg Uh, if you watch the game you know if you didn't uh this game really ended midway through the third quarter the timberwolves were up 16 Luka Doncic argued a no call uh, after he drove to the basket with the ref, got two immediate technical fouls, was ejected. Jason Kidd then ran out to defend Luka, one of the few times he's ever done that after Luka gets a technical. And Jason Kidd got ejected as well. Anthony Edwards made all four free throws. Timberwolves were up 20, and that was the game. The Mavericks didn't have Luka, already missing Josh Green, Maxi Kleba, Dwight Powell. And then Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, was a scratch today as well with a non-COVID illness. So that was the game. And I think the story of the game is going to be the ejections. And that's what I think a lot of beat writers and paid media are, are going to talk about. You know, actual full-time. When I say paid, I mean like full-time, not like people like us who, like, who get peanuts uh, to cover this team. Talking about the people that it's their full-time jobs. They're going to... The storylines coming out of this game are going to be the ejections because how could it not be, you know, Luca getting ejected like that on what, what seemed like, you know, from our vantage point watching on television, obviously seemed like a, a pretty bogus call and situation. Um, we don't we don't know exactly what he said to the referee, so we'll never really know. But you know, just watching it uh, from our TV sets, it looked looked awful, and that's going to be the story. Um, but the real story is the Mavericks are continually failing to show up when they need to show up and be the team that I think a lot of people think that they can be. When Luka got ejected, this team was down 16 midway through the third quarter to a Minnesota team on the second night of a back-to-back without Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. They're two, they're two star big men. You know, the two guys that they basically decided to build this team around along with Anthony Edwards. Those two guys were out. Kyle Anderson, a key bench piece for them, was also out. So they were missing two major starters and a a major bench player. Mavericks still had Luka. They still had the staples of their starting lineup from a year ago. 
Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock. They had Christian Wood. They had enough to win this game if they played well or and did the things that they needed to do. And they did not. Um, the final three-point shooting number is really misleading. They were 19 of 46, 41%. But Dinwiddie, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, and, and Davis Breton, um combined for 11 of those 19 three-pointers. And almost pretty much all of Breton's three-pointers came when the game was basically over. Um, no one else really shot the ball well. Reggie Bullock played 33 minutes and scored zero points again. Um, Dorian looked like he might have been having a good game, but he uh, left in the third quarter uh, with a abductor injury, and we don't know the status of him going forward. So, again, another injury. And, again, this is what me and Kirk have been talking about. I'm, I'm not going to talk too long, uh, I promise, because I don't know what else to say. Um, this is what me and Kirk talked about. This was a 500 team. This team with a 500 record uh, with at full strength, we were practically screaming that this was not great because no team goes through an 82 NBA, any 82 game NBA season and goes unscathed. You know, like I said, some teams are more snake bitten than others. Some teams get multiple season ending injuries to guys that they're counting on. Other teams maybe just get bumps and bruises where guys miss a couple games here and then, or you get a guy sprains an ankle and he's out for a week. Uh, and the Mavericks are kind of going through that right now. Maxie's out for, you know, six to eight weeks. That's why Powell got hurt the other night against Portland. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr., illness, sick. Like, that that happens. Dwight's injury looks like it happens. He's going to be back, relative, you know, hopefully soon. Josh Green, sprained elbow, should be back after they finish up this road trip. So, again, not a season-ending injury, but missing a good chunk of games. But that's normal. All teams go through this. So, the fact that the Mavericks – had a healthy team and they had a Luca playing like one of the greatest players ever for the most part, looking absolutely spectacular and they can't get past 500. They can't get over this 500 record. Now they're one game under they're 15 and 16. We're almost to the end of December. They're dangerously getting close to the start that they had last season where they were 16 and 18 at the lowest point before turning it around. But remember they turned it around and Luca came back and everyone came back healthy. So What's going to be the excuse now? Maybe, I mean, maybe it's when Maxi comes back. I, I don't know, but Luca's your main guy. You should be able to win some of these games, even if you are missing some key rotation players. You know, but the problem was, is they weren't winning. They consistently with everyone healthy. So again, you're going to get injuries. Things are going to look worse. I've really been trying to give this team the benefit of the doubt. I think if you followed my writing this year, if you followed the podcast this year, you know, I think I've been pretty balanced on this team and not trying to get too doom and gloom, not maybe try to get too high, just try to stay pretty rational and level. I did predict that this game, this team would win 49 games, which I think may, might have been lower than some of my other uh, fellow media uh, partners, but still not like outrageously low. Like in, we were all in the same ballpark. So it's not like I was super down on the team before the season started, despite the fact that I disagreed with their offseason moves and decision making. You know, Luca plus shooting usually equals a pretty good team. And we're just not seeing it. And I really thought, you know, they won when they won four out of five and they beat uh, Golden State and then they killed the Knicks on the road, clobbered uh, Phoenix by, by 19. They had back to back double digit wins for the first time all season. Then they went on the road, second out of a back to back Denver, literally the hardest game you can play in the nba for the most part is a second night of a back-to-back in denver and they won a really gritty uh hard-fought game then they came back home they played milwaukee and they lost but it was a really really great effort i mean they looked like the better team you know about at the start of the fourth quarter they were playing so well and then they kind of farted that game away with free throws but at the end of the day you're like okay it was free throws it's not like there was other stuff you know clean up the free throws which unfortunately has been an issue for this team all year but the effort the energy level you know everything else was looking good and since that milwaukee game it's just been i I don't know they get waxed by chicago without luca you know i thought maybe they were going to turn i thought maybe again things were looking up when they throttled portland at home but now they've lost two straight and they're 15 and 16 and it's the first time they've been uh, under 500 since December 1st when they lost that game against Detroit. Um, so last time they went under 500, they won three in a row to get to 13-11. So maybe that happens again. And I, I mean, they play Minnesota again, they play Houston, they play Los Angeles their next three games. So I guess it could happen. But 
we're we're running out of time. I I, I keep thinking this team's going to go on a run, and they keep you know they keep kind of face planning uh, in front of everyone, and you know. Uh, one of the talking points and narratives has been the West is kind of such a mess that all these teams are grouped together and like, you know, eighth place or 10th place isn't that far from first place. And that's still kind of true. All things considered, you know, if the Mavericks were 10th, the Mavericks are 10th in the Western conference right now, if they were 10th in the East, um, they would be nine and a half games back from first place. They're five, which is still pretty remarkable this late into the season, but guys, it's, it's getting, it's getting dicey. They are, um, they're two and a half games away from six seed Clippers who are 18 and 14, three, four games above 500. The Mavericks haven't been four games above 500 all season. Their highest was nine. They were nine and uh, six, um, uh, at their highest. And they haven't been able to get above three games. Uh, and the Clippers are four. Um, they are, uh, now three and a half, ooh, yeah, now they're three and a half uh, games back from the fourth seed, which is home court, which is important because guess what? The Mavs are three and 11 on the road. So it's becoming increasingly dicey for this team's uh, playoff run if they want to make a playoff run uh, if they don't get the fourth seed. And uh, these team, uh, the other teams ahead of them in the standings are starting to find themselves a little bit and starting to get more consistent. And the Mavericks just can't find any, uh, again, the season's not over. There's plenty of time left, but these games are just, they're maddening and they're running out of rope. Um, if they keep playing like this, they're going to wake up one day and they're going to, they're going to see that they're five or six games away from sixth place. And, and they're going to be struggling to get out of that play in tournament spot. So they just, something. <laughs> Something has to change. I don't know. Maybe the double ejection with Kid, uh, with Luca. I don't know. Maybe that lights a fire under their ass. Um, I would expect a much more spirited effort uh, Wednesday night against this very same Minnesota team. But unfortunately, Rudy Gobert might be back, uh, so they kind of miss their chance. You know, Minnesota might be um, a better, you know, fuller, uh, healthier team when Wednesday comes. So again, they're just they're shooting themselves in the foot. I don't know what else to say. The defense was horrible. Um, this was a game you really felt no Josh Green, no Maxi Kleba. Cause those guys, you know, especially with Josh Green, though he comes off the bench and the team kind of picks it up a little bit. You can feel it when he's on the floor because he's an athlete. Like this team just doesn't have any athletes. Uh, you know, I love, I love Dorian, love Reggie. Um, you know, love these guys, you know, even love Luke, you know, obviously love Luca, you know, Dinwiddie might, Dinwiddie and Wood are probably their two maybe best athletes outside of Josh Green. Uh, maybe Dwight Powell, but like they just go against these teams with long arms that can run and jump faster than them, and it just causes problems. Minnesota pushed the pace relentlessly. Mavericks had 15 turnovers because they couldn't handle it, uh, trying to match Minnesota's tempo. They just couldn't do it. Um, they couldn't play their game. They couldn't slow Minnesota down. Minnesota got in transition almost as much as they wanted, um, and and that was the game. And Luka didn't look great either. You know, there's another game where Luka – just did not set the tone. He was before he got ejected. He was five of seventeen from the floor. Um, had nineteen points, of course, because he made three threes and he was making his free throws, which was nice. Um, but again, he was having a really rough shooting night, and he just didn't look active or engaged uh, for most of this game before he got ejected. And you know, Christian Wood came back down to earth. He was four of eleven. You know, just I I don't even know where this team would be if Spencer Dinwiddie wasn't having one of the best seasons of his career. Uh, I, I think that's kind of quietly gone under the radar. If you just look at his career numbers, you know, and then you look at what he's doing as a full-time starter in Dallas and it's like, Holy crap. Like, I mean, he scored more points per game in previous stops, but I mean, he is blowing away his, his three point uh, percentages. He's blowing away uh, a lot of his efficiency numbers. And it's like, imagine if, if Dinwiddie was still like good, but he was closer to Brooklyn Dinwiddie where he's shooting, 30, 32% from three. Uh, he's shooting 41%. He's been huge. He's been absolutely huge. I just, I don't even know where this team would be without his production uh, because so many other guys have just seemingly fallen off. You know, Dorian and Reggie, um, to name two guys. And, 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 you know, missing missing Brunson, you know, if it wasn't for Dinwiddie, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, it's tough to think about. So, 
I don't really know what else to say. Um, Kirk, I'm hoping ha- well he should have his internet back when they play Wednesday against Minnesota. Maybe Kirk is the uh, lucky rabbit's foot we need, and the Mavericks will pick up a win. But you know, don't let the ejections cover up the fact that the Mavericks were playing an awful game and they were on their way to losing a really really bad game. Uh, no matter what, um, it's time to start looking at the standings and, and not getting concerned. You're you're not getting panicked yet. But it's time to take it seriously. Uh, I think we're no, you know, we're past the beginning of the season. We're we are we are getting into the heart of the season, and this team is one game under five hundred. So, last season they were sixteen eighteen at their lowest point before they turned it around. So you have to give this team, I think, some of that, despite the fact that you know last season's team went through way more injury and COVID issues than this team. So. I don't know. It's a mess. Uh, I don't. They they just they have to figure it out. They have to figure a way to get out of this funk that they're in, or things are going to get much much worse. Um, it's so bizarre. They were they were eighth in net rating and cleaning the glass entering this game. So I, I still just have belief that things are going to turn around. But two one of two things are going to happen in the next three to four weeks. You know, the record is going to match. Their their advanced data, which their advanced data right now is not too bad in the net rating, they're going to start looking like a better team, or that number is going to go down with the record. You know, they it's going to be really, it's unlikely that they're going to keep skirting this line while still producing like a top eight team in the NBA. Uh, well, something's got to give, and we're going to see it, you know, over the next month, I think. So we'll see which side the Mavericks fall on. They really need to get back on track. Really need to get a win Wednesday. So again, this is Josh Bow from Maz Moneyball After Dark. Uh, apologies, you know that we have another stinky game to kind of cover. I know our numbers. You guys don't like listening when we lose when the Mavericks lose. Don't like reading when the Mavericks lose, and I don't blame you. So hopefully, we'll come back to you Wednesday night with a victory. Again, Mavericks lose to the Minnesota Timberwolves, one sixteen one oh six. Mavericks are one game under five hundred, fifteen and sixteen. They are tenth in the Western Conference as of right now. This is Josh Bo from asmoneyball.com, and we'll talk to you later. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical.